I've done a video on how to set up and use Cloudflare tunnels to publicly host all your services, even if you're behind CGNAT. However, when you do this, there are some limitations based on Cloudflare's TOS, most notably restricting your ability to host high bandwidth services like file hosting or streaming apps. Well, luckily today, we're gonna take a look at how to create your own tunnel so that you can stream and host all the files you want. For this setup, you'll need your domain using Cloudflare for DNS, a cloud VPS or any computer with a public IP, and a machine, VM, or container in your home network with access to the services you want to expose. Got it? Okay, good. So in general, a network tunnel allows the outside world to communicate with services in your network even when your network is behind CGNAT and a firewall. If you've ever tried to host something using the standard Cloudflare and Nginx proxy manager way and have had no luck, then it's possible you're stuck behind CGNAT. What we're gonna do is instead of using Cloudflare's tunnel service to route our DNS records through their own tunnel network, we're gonna deploy a tail scale network on a cloud VPS that we know isn't behind CGNAT and has a static public IP address. That will allow us to use that public IP as exposure to the outside world, then tunnel into our home network via tail scale. Now we don't have to use a cloud VPS for this, if you have a friend or family member that you know the front door lock combination for, you can pay them a visit and leave a hidden server in their house for them to wake up to. Obviously, they will have to have a public IP and not be behind CGNAT for that to work. But for this setup, we will be using a cloud VPS because it's something everyone has access to. All right, I'll be using American Cloud as my cloud provider of choice. I've done a video on their hosting solutions a while back and they're my go-to for cloud projects like this, especially since there are no network egress fees. So for our cloud or remote setup, we need two services running, Tailscale and Nginx Proxy Manager. That's it. Tailscale is extremely versatile and can run on pretty much anything, but I've found the easiest way is just a plain old Linux server install. I went with Ubuntu cause, well, that's what I use. This doesn't have to be anything crazy powerful either. I'm running a dual core VM with four gigabytes of RAM and 50 gigabytes of storage for this setup. Once you have a Linux server up and ready to go, you'll wanna get Tailscale installed first. Tailscale has excellent documentation on how to get it up and running on any system. And luckily for us, there is a one line install script for Linux. After running that, we are prompted to run the Tailscale up command, which will allow us to authenticate our machine. You'll only have to do this once, so don't worry. Simply follow that link to sign into your Tailscale account to get the VM added to your Tailscale network. Obviously, this will require a Tailscale account, so make sure you have one. Now, there are a lot of settings you can play with to have your Tailscale machine do all different types of things, but for this entire process, we only really care about subnet routing. You see, our cloud VM is acting as our point of contact for everything in the outside world, that can't directly get into our CG natted home network. Our VM will then use Tailscale to connect to another machine inside our network that's also running Tailscale, and this machine will be the one that exposes the subnets inside our network. So our cloud VM isn't exposing any subnets of its own, but it does need to know that those subnets exist on the other side. So we need to pass through the accept routes flag in our Tailscale up command. After doing this, our cloud VM will now be aware of any subnets we have advertised throughout our entire Tailscale network. As of right now, that's none, but that'll change in a bit. Our second piece of software is Nginx Proxy Manager, and this is what's actually gonna turn that domain that's being publicly accessed into a route to a service on your network. The best way to get NPM installed is via Docker Compose, so go ahead and get Docker and Docker Compose installed on your cloud VM. I typically just install docker.io, then spin up portainer so that I have a GUI for everything, but that's not really required. You can just copy the sample docker compose file from the Nginx proxy manager site and create that exact same file anywhere on your cloud VM. Then from that directory, run docker compose up D and your NPM instance will be up and running. NPM will essentially need two things, ports 443 and 81 forwarded on your public IP to Nginx, and then access to the local services on your network. In American Cloud, I can just simply add a port forwarding rule for 443 and 81, 
which will then automatically open those ports for me as well. 443 is what's gonna allow our HTTPS traffic to come in from Cloudflare, and 81 is just to access the GUI and can be removed when we're done with the setup. From here, we can use the public IP of our Cloud VM and port 81 to get into the UI. After logging in and changing our password, we are ready to set everything up. The two things we need for traffic to flow properly is a proxy host record and an SSL certificate. The easiest way is to start with your SSL certs. We're gonna go ahead and add a Let's Encrypt certificate and I personally like using wildcard certs since I can use the same one for all of my subdomains. You don't have to do this though. Add the domain you'd like to use, an email address, and since we're using Cloudflare for DNS, we can use the Cloudflare DNS challenge built into NPM. This will require a token that has access to edit the proper DNS zone. If you don't already have a token, then you can create one under your profile in the API token section. You'll wanna use the edit zone DNS template and make sure that it has edit permissions on the proper zone or all the zones if you wanna control all your domains with a single token. Paste that token back into your challenge and click okay. Boom, you've got a properly signed SSL cert. Now go back to your dashboard and let's create a proxy host. The domain name is going to match the DNS record you set up in Cloudflare for the service you wanna host. You can see I'm using test.mrballoonhands.com and the IP I'm using is the public IP of my cloud VM. The scheme is gonna match what the service is, so if your service is running via HTTP, then leave it as HTTP. If it's encrypted with HTTPS, then use that. Both are fine, and even if it is HTTP, your traffic will still be encrypted while in flight from your home network to the outside world, as you're about to see. The IP is going to be the local IP of the service you're hosting. For example, I'm using 192.168.40.26, which hosts my self-hosted owncast site, and that's on port 8085, so we'll use that. Now to get things encrypted and use that certificate we created before, go to SSL and select the cert. Here you can see why I use wildcards since when you're setting up a bunch, it's just easier to have a single cert. Then click save and we're done. Well, we're done with the cloud stuff. The other half is getting tail scale set up inside our home network so that NPM can actually reach this stuff. Like I mentioned, tail scale is very versatile. The only requirement is that the machine you host it on has to have access to the services you want to expose. For this example, I'll be running it on this little Raspberry Pi Zero 2. Yep, this little thing is going to run the tail scale service and allow all the magic to happen. After getting Raspberry Pi OS installed, the tail scale setup was honestly the same as before. Run the install script, run the tail scale up command, and then authenticate. But then we have a slight change. Remember how before we had to use the accept routes flag so that our cloud VM could find the subnets in our home network? Well, this guy has to actually advertise those subnets, and we do that with the advertise routes flag. This will essentially just be a comma separated list of subnets you'd like to expose. For my example, I plan on exposing just two things. My own cache service hosted on 192.168.40.26 and my local AI instance hosted on 10.0.0.27. I'm using the 32 subnet here since those are the only IPs I wanna expose. If you wanna expose the entire 24 subnet, then you can do that too. After running this command, we'll need to head into our Tailscale admin page and approve those routes. Again, this is a one-time thing. And now, if you did everything right, not only should you be able to ping from your cloud VM to the Tailscale IP of your home Tailscale instance, but you should be able to ping those subnets that you exposed. And assuming that works properly, you should be able to navigate to your domain you set up in Cloudflare and see your self-hosted services properly accessible with TLS encryption even behind a CG NATed network. Now you're free to add whatever you want. As long as the route is advertised, then you should be able to hit it. I set up a DNS record for my AI instance, added the proxy host in NPM, and since it's already an advertised route, then it was ready. I could hit my local AI instance from my cloud VM using my domain. Pretty neat stuff. To test how much bandwidth we can push from the cloud to our internal network via tail scale, 
I set up an iPerf test between the Cloud VM and my Raspberry Pi. Yeah, um, those numbers aren't anything impressive. But for hosting things that don't require a ton of bandwidth, it's perfectly usable. And remember, this is on a $15 Raspberry Pi Zero 2 over Wi-Fi. To see what it would be like with something a bit more capable, I spun up Tailscale on an LXC container in my local Proxmox cluster and ran the same test. Now those are much more usable numbers, and I just gave this LXC two cores and two gigabytes of RAM. So overall, is this something I'd recommend doing? Yeah, 100%. Do you have to do it exactly like I did? Absolutely not. I think the optimal way is to snag a cheap, low power device and deploy it at a friend's house who has a public IP, assuming they let you. If you can justify the cost of a cloud VPS or already have one, then that's an awesome option too. Just be careful of network egress fees. I did mention that American Cloud doesn't have egress fees, so they're actually a perfect provider for this application. If you want to check them out, use my affiliate link down in the description below. But that's all I have. Let me know down in the comments how you get around CGNet. I assume Cloudflare tunnels, but maybe you want to try this out. If you like this video, go ahead and drop a like. If you want to see more of my face, then subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and Patreons. You guys are my super reliable network tunnel that I like to crawl around inside like an all encrypted and cozy little gremlin. Y'all are the bomb.mrballoonhands.com. And if you're still watching, you're DNS. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.